everybody, welcome to Kids Church. Uh, it's a little different than a typical Sunday morning, but this is our new normal right now. So we're gonna be coming live from my basement. Um, I just wanted to open up an order for a countdown with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Heavenly Father, Papa God, we're so happy to have this opportunity to worship and learn about you in this way. God, I just pray that you're with every mom and dad and child and family this day those who are listening today and those who aren't, that your word would just become real and deep and roots would be made. God, that we would be your salt and your light. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Welcome. My name is Grace. I want to introduce my kids to you. I have two of the three here right now. This is our first broadcast. We're going to be trying to do this. I have uh, Jackson and Georgia, and we're going to be trying to do this from home. We don't know what it's going to look like tomorrow morning when we go live, so we're going to try to do a YouTube video each week as well, just so that if you don't get a chance to worship with us on Sunday morning, you can join us here every week. So, guys, are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's get to this lesson. So, we know that it's a very different time right now with um, coronavirus and COVID-19. We're looking at being in our homes a little bit more, but we want to continue to walk through the Bible. We've actually been as a church going through all of our Bible so far. So we have been in Genesis, Genesis Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and now we're in Matthew. Matthew, that's right. And you know, God is so faithful. He knew this was happening in the world. He had planned for what we were going to do as a kids church and last week we just finished learning about the beatitudes how blessed are those who follow god and what he would do in that in turn for them and you know what he scheduled us to be learning about being salt and light this week so we're continuing right along where we left off last week from our church in matthew 5. so i'm going to take you there um did anyone bring their sword to church now if you don't have it the great thing about youtube is you can actually push pause so go get your bible it's important that you read from the word of god especially during this time moms and dads take time to read to your kids but we're going to go right to matthew chapter 5. now if you can't find it right away that's okay but it's important when we're done to find matthew 5 in your bible take your highlighter with mom and dad's help or by yourself if you're big, and underline those verses. These are the verses that are actually going to stick with you. When you're an old lady like me, this is the time to remember. So if we turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to be looking at verse 13. And we're going to read two parts there, Matthew 13 to 16. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It no longer is good for anything, except maybe to be thrown out or trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people hide a lamp and put it under a bowl. No way, instead they put it on a stand. And it gives light for everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they can see your good deeds and they will gl glorify your Father in heaven. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be walking through that. So what does salt and light actually mean? What is salt good for? Now did you know a long, long time ago when Jesus was walking on the earth, there were Roman soldiers and those Roman soldiers, they, they actually got paid in salt. Now, Part of it was it was a very difficult time and there wasn't a lot of resources and it was actually really hard to find salt. That meant that salt was considered very valuable at that time um, because they couldn't obtain it. Kind of like right now with COVID-19 and finding toilet paper, <laughs> right? So part of what we had to do is soldiers were actually paid in salt during those hard times. Now, I'm not 100% certain about this, but I heard that the English word salary actually came from that and that that's where that phrase worth their salt came from 
Salt had great value. So Jesus used it to explain how people, how we are like that. Now, salt has a lot of different reasons and a lot of different things, and I want to tell you why. Salt actually adds flavor. So if we have salt here, salt is a really great thing. Like, well, it's actually not so great just like that, but it is a good thing that we can use. <clears throat> Don't do that. That wasn't very enjoyable, but you know what? Salt on potato chips or salt in a beautiful homemade soup, salt adds flavor to our food. Did you know even putting a little bit of salt on some sweet watermelon makes it even sweeter? That's what salt does. Salt is the flavor, the zest, the excitement to our food. I'm sure some of you are doing a lot more cooking right now, and salt's a big deal. It can be pretty bland, your food, if you don't actually have salt. So salt adds flavor. Just like we are supposed to be the zeal, the excitement, the flavor for our friends to see Jesus. We don't want to be those people who are all scared or sitting in our homes being like, oh, life is terrible. Nah, we've been given a gift of time to be with our families and to really use this to share about Jesus' love. Salt's actually a preservative. Georgia, do you know what a preservative is? No? Well, salt was used to actually take food and they would take a piece of meat or fish and they would like cover it all in salt and then put it in a storage area and it would keep that food a lot longer. That's before they had fridges or freezers or both, right? So salt was used to preserve the food and make it last longer. Salt helped food from rotting or decaying. That's our job, friends. That's what we're supposed to do. The world needs hope, especially right now. Our job is to share about Jesus with others so we can bring that hope and stop the decay, stop death. We want our friends to be preserved for all eternity, right? Well, we need to be the salt to them. Other thing salt does, it makes you really, really thirsty. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. But that's the thing. You can eat a whole bag of potato chips or sunflower seeds and you want to drink so much. Just like we're salt, we want people to be thirsty for the living water of Jesus. That's our job. Salt also promotes healing. I don't know if your mom has ever said, gargle with salt water, if you have a sore throat. Or maybe you get like one of those canker sores or something and you have to put some salt right on the wound in your mouth. Or maybe you have a cut and you accidentally touch something that's salty. Or you're eating salt and vinegar chips and it makes your fingers hurt if you've got alleys there. That's what salt does. Salt actually attacks bacteria and promotes healing. We're supposed to help heal the world in the name of Jesus. Our job is to bring people hope and faith and help them because salt kills bacteria. We're supposed to help people to be able to get rid of all that junk by telling them about Jesus. You know, we're in Canada right now, and so salt is also used to melt things. Did you know that if you do have an icy sidewalk, you can put salt on there, it helps melt the ice. Or in Canada, we actually have people who are paid to go and salt or sand the roads, to put that on to break down the ice. Salt melts. And you know what? That's our job. Our job is to tell people about Jesus and share about his love because his love is the only thing that can melt that hard, frozen heart. No, I'm not talking about frozen too. I'm not talking about Queen Elsa. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. You know, the one who really wants to melt that frozen heart. Salt is important. Now, what about the light? So say I have this salt and I'm gonna put some in a bowl. So those verses talked about, those verses talked about that. Now, I'd be very, very sick if I wanted to eat this whole bowl of salt. I wouldn't be good for anybody. But what if we actually look at our light? Let's see. So if we're supposed to be light for everybody, we're not supposed to just let our light shine and hide it in our own house. Now it's a little tricky with COVID-19, but there's still ways that you can do that. Because as soon as you take your light and hide it under a bowl, as soon as you hide it, can you see my light? No, when it's hidden, your light disappears and it's not good for anybody. God wants you to shine your light because as soon as you hide your light, do you know what happens? Hmm, I wonder if this works. 
the light actually goes out when you hide it. When there's nothing left and there's no reason for your light to shine, it doesn't need to shine anymore. So we don't want to hide our light. We want to share our light because that's when Jesus can be sh shone through us. So friends, you don't want to just hide in your house and not talk to people. There's lots of great things about the time we live in now. We don't want to, when we have our light out, it makes it really hard to see Jesus. So we need to bring peace and calm as we share about him. I know you guys want to share. Now, how can you be salt in life in these times? What do you think that looks like? I know the difference is it's when you're home right now, it's a little bit trickier. But what happens after? When, when we're not in our social distancing practice anymore, or you're back at school or back in church, how do you shine bright for Jesus? Now, my kids and I have been thinking about a few different ways that we could do that. What about making cookies for a neighbor who can't go out right now and leaving them on their doorstep? Or writing beautiful cards that you can mail? Or maybe writing pictures or making pictures and emailing them or shining them up on your windows in your house? What about something as simple as obeying your parents? who maybe have a little bit less patience right now, or being kind or doing something nice for your siblings without being asked. Wouldn't that shine Jesus' light bright in you? Guys, you could call someone who's lonely or maybe FaceTime them or Google Hangout with them. There's lots of opportunities to encourage people and shine your light for Jesus. And that's what Jesus said. We're always going to shine the brightest and be the saltiest when we act like him. You got this, friends. I want you to remind you guys, hashtag love hard. That's what we got to do right now. And right now it might feel like it's hard. It's hard to be at home with our just our families. But this is, this is a time God's given us to be at home, to have dinner with our parents, to, to do fun things you've never done before with just your family. And guys, if you don't have a lot of things going on and you need help, reach out. We'll get you connected. But this is your chance. This is how we love hard. We love each other hard. So let's pray. God, I just thank you for the opportunity to be together and to just be with you. God, that you are with us. You would tell us that you never leave or forsake us. And your promise is that where two or three are gathered, you're there in the midst of them. So for those people who around the world right now are just meeting, whether it's through digital means or with their families, God, I pray that you would just fill up and be with them in that room. Be what they need. Be with those who are sick right now, God, that you would take care of them, that you would heal their bodies to quick recovery. Be with those who are sad or lonely. God, that you would be their comfort. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for my family, God, that you are doing a good work and for the opportunities we have to just support and love. Bless us this day and be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.